Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today, I am very excited to have uh, Vanita Lenkaji with us. Uh, it's been a long time uh, since we have done some collaboration. So, welcome to Exotic Astrology after so many years again. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure always and uh, good to see you. Yes. Uh, Hale and Hearty. Yes. After ages, we are meeting up and it's always a pleasure and uh, to connect with a beautiful soul. It's always a privilege. Thank you so much for inviting me on your channel. Yes. So yes. humble. <laughs> That's very good that you are here again after a long time. So for anybody, if you don't know, madam, then please, I will put the YouTube channel uh, in the description section. The link, please go out and check and also her email and her websites. Uh, website also, she does uh, consultations and also she's very good with Vastu. So if you have any queries about your chart or your home, then please contact her in the email or through the website. And please tell us what would you like to enlighten us with today? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, today I'm going to be discussing, first of all, uh, the principle of Bhavad Bhavan. Okay. Uh, people have touched upon it many times. I have seen that, you know, they talk, but it is not the information which is complete. Mm -hmm. We must also check from Rashi to Rashi also. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be incorporating that alongside and how we can use this principle in our uh, checking the horoscope as to how it is going to be impacting us in a particular dasha, antra dasha. Mm. Because it's not just that bhavad bhavam, we just see that, okay, from the second house, third house, you know, is the second. So from second to second is third. So how do we use it? So I will be sharing my insights on that. And also towards the end, maybe I will be touching upon the Aruda, okay. Aruda Padas. Okay. Now, if we are talking about Bhavad Bhavam. That's something that we are going to be, you know, uh, experiencing the, uh, you know, whatever is going to be happening in our life through the Bhavad Bhavam principle. It's for self. Okay. But Aruda is how people perceive you. <laughs> so it's quite similar because the Aruda means that if at all a planet, the Lagnesh, suppose we talk about, is posited in the third house. Yeah. So from there, third, three places away is the fifth house where your Aruda Pada of the first house is, the Aruda Lagna. So okay. that is also very important to know that what, what is my life going to be and how people are going to be perceiving my life to be. Sometimes people think that, oh, he's so rich, he's so wealthy, he's so intelligent, but and he's doing really well for himself. But from the inside, the inside story is definitely not the same. So mm -hmm. Bhavad Bhavam tells us what is the inside story and Aruda is what people perceive you as. So this is a very um, important and a full informa information uh, rather than a half-baked information, which I'll be sharing today. And if I get time towards the end, I will share with you my insights on Aruda Pada, Aruda Lagna in all the 12 signs. Okay. Because if I start doing the second Lord, Pada in all the 12 signs, third Lord Pada in all the 12 signs, it will be a huge and a very long and elongated video, which is not possible. Maybe some other time I will cover what happens when the second Aruda is in other houses. So that is another, you know, story altogether. But today I will try to do Aruda Lagna, if is in all the 12 signs or 12 houses, how it impacts us. Okay? okay, so let me start sharing with you the presentation so that you know the principle also, what does it mean, Bhavad Bhavam, how it actually impacts us all, okay, and how you use it. Mm -hmm. So that is something which uh, will actually guide you through to your chart as well. Great. Okay, so let me start with the presentation. Uh, I have already, you know, before starting this, I've already, uh, you know, chanted uh, my Ganesha mantra that I always do. So uh, if you want, I can repeat it so that everybody, you know, feels connected to Ganesha again. Yes. So right. I use G-U-N-G Gang instead of Gum. People use Om Gum. I use Om Gum. Okay. Om Gangana Pataye Namo Namaha Om Gang 
गणपत नमो नम ओ गणपत नमो नम ओ शांति 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 Also, please spare me and pardon me for the voice, which is breaking because mm. I have been traveling and I could not, like you know, give my throat the rest. So, what is this principle of? Yeah, yeah, you were saying something, Baba Ji. It's crystal clear your voice. No issues with it. Okay, thank you. So, what is this Bhavat Bhavam principle? First of all, one must know that when you are examining a particular house, you should see. you should count from that particular house the same number mm -hmm. so if you are talking about second from second it is the third house when we are talking from third to third we are talking about fifth house and so on and so forth so i will be covering all the houses for from first to first is the first house mm -hmm. from seventh to seventh is the first house so the so grading would almost be the same in that okay mm -hmm. so also we must check the rashi to rashi suppose in the natural zodiac we know that second house is ruled by venus and third house is ruled by mercury correct so there has to be a major connection between the two signs rulers when we talk about bhavat bhavam so it is not bhavat bhavam but it is sort of bhavat bhavam but rashi to rashi connection actually Okay. But we need to connect that. It is not possible that we'll not get the results, uh, because again I said that people just talk about from house to house, mm -hmm. and they leave aside the Rashi to Rashi connectivity, which is the most important to know about the dasha, how the dasha is going to be. Mm -hmm. If they have good, you know, good relationship. Suppose Sun and Saturn, they don't have a good connectivity. Mm -hmm. So we have to check from that also. What is the uh, you know connection between the two so if we see leo rising okay so leo rising people will have from 7th to 7th is sun saturn connection no oh uh, yeah yeah yes yes so how the dasha is going to be you know if sun is well positioned in the chart saturn is well positioned in the chart being the dasha antra dasha so it will be a good dasha correct right. or else it will be it will suffer so that is how i use this principle on regular basis when i'm doing the reading okay okay so let's start with the first from first so as you can see it is the first house only when we talk about the first from first yeah. and first from first means that it is about mars mars okay it's about mars mars so uh, in the dasha of mars and also sun also sun because sun exalts here correct and also jupiter why because jupiter gets big bali here Mm. also mercury because mercury gets dikh bali here perfect so can you see how i'm incorporating baba ji mm. i'm incorporating mars so mars dasha jupiter dasha mercury dasha sun dasha if this lagna lord if this first house lord is well placed mm -hmm. that is mars is well placed in the chart you are sorted in the dasha of either of these okay okay and this will give you what this will give you status this will give you uh, a uh, uh, healthy body it will give you personality integrity it will give you self image enhancement identity it will give you vitality you will have life force animation and you will definitely be able to navigate your life's challenges with enthusiasm that's what this uh, if is strong first from first is strong and you will have competitive abilities uh you will definitely be taking up new uh, things very in a stride and you will always be the initiator as we know the airy sign does you know all the significations will be coming into force and you will have muscular body also you will have good blood related uh, you know uh, system in uh, stamina physical strength all that is going to be really enhanced here mm. okay so this is something which gives you good appearance also okay if this lord of the first is well positioned and first from first bhavat bhavam okay so this is how the principle runs through now we come to the next one that is 
second from second. Now, second from second is about uh, the potential for self-made financial gains through utilization of one's resources and skills, especially in the realm of communication and business ventures, because third house is the house of communication. Mm -hmm. So you will be good at investing uh, the capital uh, into business if you have that kind of strength, if you have that kind of courage, because we need courage here. Right. And it is directly proportional no, to each other. Your finance is directly proportional to the uh, your courage, your communication skills, your... Uh, see, I have not seen any businessman introverted. They will be outspoken. They'll be blunt. They'll be outgoing kinds. They'll, they will have entrepreneurial uh, skills also, of course. So they will make good amount of money. And they will be in the public limelight also, media, journalism, all that will be also getting enhanced. Third house significations will definitely give you if that is strong. So now what is the connection now forming? Second house ruled by Venus, third mm -hmm. house ruled by Mercury. Mm -hmm, yes. So they are compatible. They are both friendly. So it, mm -hmm. And they will be always in their close vicinity also. Yeah, yeah, so always. Yes. So if they are forming a good connection and you are in the Dasha of Sun, Mercury or Sun, Venus, uh, not Sun, Venus, but Mercury, Venus, Venus, Mercury, so that Dasha will actually be good if your third house is strong. Your third house ruler is strong. You know, it depends. Maybe, you know, you are a Taurus rising. Your third house is moon. Right? Mm -hmm. Ruled by moon. Cancer sign. So it will depend on your moon in the chart for Taurus natives. How your Dasha is going to be. And you should also see the connection. See, for all ascendants, if I start doing Babaji, that will be a yeah. Very, very long video. So I'm just doing for Aries natives or we can say just the Kalpurasha Kundli. Yeah, so yeah. rotate your chart yourself. See how the Gemini ruler Mercury and Moon are forming a connection in Taurus rising. Correct. How Correct. is it forming a connectivity? Okay. Correct. So similarly, Gemini, you have to see the uh, camps, uh, Moon and Sun. Correct. Right? Yes. So that is how this is going to be. So major development will happen during the periods of mercury and venus for sure if they are well positioned okay, okay. Mm -hmm. now coming to the next one that is third from third is the fifth house yes I've, that is why i've made both the charts so that everybody i hope the window is uh, smaller on the side should i close my video i mean it's well visible everything is clear. okay it's visible right okay on the screen okay so uh, the third from third is the fifth house. Yes. And we know the fifth house is about your writing skills, your creative expression, your intellectual pursuits, your, uh, you know, maybe literary ventures, children, creativity, all that. So if you have your um, Gemini and Sun, uh, Mercury and Sun together. Yes. So how is Bhavam principle works wonders for you? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And as it is sun in the natural zodiac, we know, rules the fifth house and mm -hmm. is very creative. And we uh, actually, it's a significant of our children also. Mm -hmm. So if you have to see why I don't have kids. Okay. Or why I have kids or why I have adopted kids. This is the main principle which comes into limelight. You mm -hmm. have to check Mercury. You have to check sun in oh. the chart. Okay. Because third house is the 11th from the 5th also. All right, correct. So, it's again. so you will have all sorts of success here in these areas if you have your third house. So third house is your communication, no? Correct. So you will have a good communication with your kids. You will have special connection with your children. They might just inspire you or they might be very good at writing skills. Hmm. Your emphasis would be on the creative expression and communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will decide that how what is your potential to connect with people also. Hmm. And also here you have to check the Jupiter Dasha also. Somehow oh. Jupiter plays a very important role because it's a, the trinal connection to the fifth house. So okay. if you Mm -hmm. the dasha period of mercury and mercury jupiter jupiter mercury you will see that individuals will actually be very communicative during that time they will get into the uh, expansion of their knowledge 
they will get into the study zone or they will start their education during that time and they will be growing creative growth happens okay okay now people will say that why i'm talking about guru it's uh, why i'm talking about uh, uh, jupiter here because jupiter is right opposite the third house that is sagittarius sign mm -hmm. it is also one of the sutra which i'm not touching upon for all the signs just came into my mind so i thought i must share that as well okay, okay. and okay. this is going to be giving you success in creativity intellectual pursuits will be good you will make significant impact in your uh, you know speech and words also this is what third from third is coming to the next one which is which is the fourth from fourth yeah now Fourth from fourth is the seventh house. Right. So I've written it over here. People will be able to make out and I've given the marking also so that it becomes easier. Now, fourth from fourth is your mother's mother. Right. Right? Your mother's mother. So it is more nourishing to you, actually. It is going to give you more nourishment. So your marriage, when we are seeing, we must see the fourth house also because it's the Sukhastana. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. So, but what is the sukh from the seventh house? We have to see. This is the sukh of the sukh. Mm. That is why after your marriage, mm -hmm. either it is your life is doomed or your life is made. Okay. <laughs> so this is also about your educational achievements. Right. How much sukh you will get from your... That is why, you know, you see... Uh, to check business whether you're going to be uh, self-employed or you're going to be serving others you should see these areas also fourth from fourth from fourth as well okay because it will qualify your educational as well as professional life mm -hmm. your achievements partnership contracts all that we this we are seeing from the uh, seventh house okay yes. so yes. this is also a, a very important uh, for your graduation diplomas examinations uh, also material comforts like uh, acquiring vehicles uh, uh, your home your house we see both the houses if your seventh house is afflicted remember you will not get the sukha of the house that you're purchasing the property you're purchasing oh i see okay yes maybe you will purchase your property but you will not live there like I have something to do with this. I'm telling, sharing on this platform. I am always traveling. Oh, I see. Always. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because mostly. there is a connection of my fourth house with my seventh house okay. in my natal chart. Okay. okay. Seventh house is of travel also, no? Mm, correct. So I don't enjoy one place. I enjoy multiple places, <laughs> actually. Okay. So it actually depends whether you're going to be getting a stable home environment or you will not. Oh. That is why it is very important to check your fourth house and the seventh house condition. How successfully will you have the partnership business? Yeah. How will you have, uh, you know, what kind of development will be there? Okay. Also, you must check the condition of moon in your chart. Okay. Moon, Venus and also Saturn. Moon. Very simple to, to understand. Why Saturn? Saturn exalts here in the seventh yes, house. Yes, yes. It's Correct. Digbala there. Correct. So you Correct. must see Moon, Venus, because they both are Digbali in the fourth house and being the ruler of the natural zodiac Venus. So in these Dasha, you will see that you're working really very hard. You're traveling. Lack of stability, if it's there, you must check the seventh house condition or Saturn Dasha. You must be in the Saturn Dasha forming a connection with Moon. In the natural zodiac, they whenever there is a Dasha of this, you will see there will be some upheavals you are going to go through in your career. Okay. 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 So that is how you should check that. And in education also, you should see if you are in the Saturn Dasha, you might just switch from one subject to another, one stream to another stream. Okay. Okay. So it That's how. For education also. Good. Yeah. So this is how you should see. Uh, have you heard of this principle ever, Babaji, the way I am describing uh, well, I have, of course, heard of Bhavadho, but not specifically the linkage between these planets, you know. So this is, okay. I'm hearing for the first time and it's quite interesting. Okay, thank you. So you can check in your chart. Uh, meanwhile, everybody should check and see how it is forming a connection. So coming to the next slide, fifth from fifth is the ninth house. Everybody knows that, you know, this is 
also your father also grandchildren and father sorry so it means that fifth is actually about your children's happiness i would say or children's growth intelligence okay and speculative ventures okay so it's also forming a connection with your you know how your lineage is going to be okay fifth from fifth it is about your higher learning spirituality and uh, it will give you that uh, see whenever whatever goes on in your head you know in your mind mm -hmm. it is always your fifth house working oh. but what is the whether it is going to materialize or not we see from the ninth house oh i that see that is why fifth house is education normal regular er education and higher education is the ninth house correct fifth correct. from fifth Right. So education and further education, education, ka education, as we say, right. is right. the higher ed education, right. upskilling right. ourselves. So we have to, which is the seed, seed is the fifth house and right. we go to the um, ninth house for that. So educational pursuits will be, how, what is your inclination? Suppose you have a planet which is not friendly. So you will see that you will change the stream. You're doing, uh, maybe, you know, you're in the, uh, science background you're doing something in the science background or humanities and you switch to the commerce or arts or maybe dance or drama you know something like that you will switch because there is a planet working in the ninth house mm -hmm. which is asking you to change so sometimes you will you must have found out that uh, even in engineering people switch you know they are doing some uh, some it and then they go to cs or they do some other stream yeah. so that is when they actually switch if they have a graha there forming a connection uh, with the fifth house and that creates that switch okay mm -hmm. risk taking abilities now your mental setup you know what is your mental inclination we see from the fifth house speculation etc and the propensity to actually make good amount of money we should see from the ninth house okay makes sense the ris excessive risk taking ability we should actually that is where my works Okay. Our mind works, our intellect works, and our actual wisdom, I would say, says mm -hmm. no, stop, you should not. So that is something which is the ninth house saying. And this is also fifth from nine suggests the individuals with this configuration may experience fortunate outcomes and blessings in various areas of life, including relationship with children, intellectual pursuit, and speculative ventures. Okay. Mm. And what are the areas, uh, dashas? You you tell me what dashas would be working now. Of course, uh, sun, then Jupiter. Uh, yes. Jupiter and, and one more. And one more. <laughs> Mercury. Mercury. Okay. Because of education. Yes. yes. Because of education and intellect also. Communication, oh. intellect. That is right opposite. So that's why. Anyways, I didn't tell you that sutra. So that is why, you know, it's okay. It's fine. But I see Mercury also in oh. anyone's chart when I'm talking about the Bhavad Bhavan principle of fifth from fifth. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Great. So coming to the sixth from sixth is 11th. Yes. Now this is an interesting one. <laughs> Because this is like, you know, a negative house. These, these three shed aya houses actually, you know, whenever they form a connection. In the Dostanas, it's very good. But in the Kendra and Trine, it is not. So okay. it has to be beaten up by some planet. Now, this is what is going to be giving you any kind of challenges. How you beat the challenges, debts, gains, friendship, social network. So this is going to give you that relief, whether you're going to pay off your loan or not you see from your six from six that is the 11th house okay. whether you will recover or not that is six from six mm. so this is why this is also about your challenges that you're going to be quitting this life so mm. we must see the significant gains profits and how you that is why the sixth house is a very important house because what is your capacity to overcome? What is the horoscope saying to overcome the, uh, you know, uh, debts, diseases and all? We see from the sixth house. And sixth from sixth is going to get strengthened because of that. Yes. Okay. So financial gains, networking, transformation of conflict into 
friendship if you have so that is six from six eleventh house and uh, also you know it is about your uh, humanitarian endeavors sixth house is house of servitude yeah eleventh house is about your humanitarian um, endeavors right. and also how you you know challenge others and how you win okay so uh, you may participate in the charity work, advocacy, voluntary uh, programs. All that is seen from the uh, 11th house for that reason. And your professional advancement is seen because 6th house is the profession, career. Yes. So what kind of advancement you will see from the 11th house? That is why it is the house of gains. Perfect. And what, now you tell me what dashas would be active and uh, rashi to rashi. Uh, Mercury and Saturn, they will be very prominent. Definitely, definitely. Yes, for sure. Mercury specifically because he is also the card for the 10th house. So it's like sure. even more yes. important in this case. Yes, so that is what it is uh, going to be in this. Uh, the Dasha is very important here. Okay. Now coming to the next slide, that is 7th from 7th. 